We're going to move on to the next story. It is titled, Husband Wants $14,000 from His Wife. I, female 36, have been married to my husband, who's 42, for two years. I've never been married before him, but he was married twice and has six kids. He requested our finances to be split. Fine by me, because seeing how he blows through his money is so frustrating. He says he has kids, commitments, and has to provide. But I don't think that kids would need that much money to live like the other kids. His bank account is almost always empty, whilst mine has over $20,000 in it. We take turns paying for daily expenses and stuff. Lately, he's been struggling with money. He borrowed from a number of people, including my own brother, about $4,000 from him just a week ago. He just seemed desperate for money. I asked what the deal was, and he said that he needed the money for the kids, which seemed fishy since kids don't really need that much money for their expenses. The eldest is 16. He came and asked to borrow $14,000 from me, pull it from my account and into his. I tried asking him what he needed the money for, but he said it was none of my business, then insisted that he'll return it ASAP. I said okay, but under the condition that he sign a contract stating he'll return the money in full. He acted all shocked and offended, then went on about how I don't trust him and his word. I told him that's all I got and this was my one and only condition. He kept ranting about how I'm refusing to help and making the situation more difficult for him instead of cooperating. I insisted on a contract to be signed before he even pulls a penny and this morning when I told him this one more time, he blew up and said that we're family and that I should be ashamed for involving courts and lawyers between family. He left the house and was so upset he hasn't responded to any of my calls yet. Am I the jerk for standing my ground with this condition? Update. So we talked after he got home and when I tried pressing him to tell me what he needs the money for, he gave me the same attitude and said, I don't have to worry about it. I still stood by the condition I made and he called me useless, then stormed off to spend the night with or at God knows who. Oh, let that trifling man go. I get the most entertainment out of the facial expressions of Anna. And I knew, I knew the statement that was said that was going to rile her up. And the statement of, I need $14,000. Why do you need $14,000? It's, it's none of your business. It's your business, huh? Yeah, it actually is. It actually is my business now. It literally is all my business. Completely my it. business. All of $14,000 worth of business. I mean, you can't go to the bank and be like, hey, I need to borrow $30,000. Why? Oh, that's none of your oh, business. No. None of your business. They gonna laugh in your oh. face. Oh, oh. It ain't none of our business, okay? Security? And you know he's bad with money? His bank account always empty. And he gonna ask to borrow how much? That, Boy, sounds, like, that sounds like gambling debt. That's what I thought. I thought I was $14,000 is such an arbitrary number not 15 not 10 14 thousand or 20 14. yeah or 20 you went straight to fourteen thousand dollars that's but he borrowed four thousand from the brother-in-law so that's 18. you know what Fossey had a good point it could be child support 14. it could be because if he, he running behind him like that he ain't spending money where he needs to yeah Fourteen thousand dollars would fit in but there. But he could have told her, "Hey, this is for back child support." He ain't say no, you business. That, that's that's an ego thing right now. Well, he couldn't say it was back child support because he's been using all along. The reason he doesn't have any money is because he's paying child support. So, if you've been paying it all along and that's why you don't have any money, how do you then create fourteen thousand dollars worth of arrear? I'm that doesn't be with add Marlon's up. First, when he got a gambling problem. I mean, it could be a gambling think, problem, think, it, it all, but if it's the child support, like <clears throat> like Diz was saying, you don't want to say it's for child support because then the next question out of your mouth is, how the hell did you get $14,000 behind in child support? Where Not is your money it. going? Gambling. Gambling. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. 
be honest with you, probably a little A and could be a, a oh, and B. It could be A and B. The four thousand dollars could have been um hey, gambling, Marla. the fourteen thousand dollars could Marla. be child support and vice versa. Hey Marlon, can I borrow twenty thousand dollars for what? None of your business. What? And, and and by the way, lady, I'm sorry, you wanted to sign a contract and everything else. If you can sign a contract all you want to. This dude had no there was nothing in him that was going to say he was going to pay you back whether you had a contract or not. That wasn't her reason for doing the contract. Nope. What was the contract for? Because because the reality of the of it is once you give money to your spouse, I don't give a damn what you wrote down. You ain't getting that back. <laughs> so <laughs> that would have been. Um, I was like, so her, what was her reason for writing the contract? Her reason was basically just to kind of hold him accountable on some level. Right. Because he's already showing that he may be in trouble and he's not sharing with her what the trouble is. But I need you to know this isn't just me giving you some money. This is you're making a commitment back to me that you're actually going to give me this money back. Right. May not be worth the paper is written on. But the point is, I'm making you sign. It. It's kind of like you do with your children. Right. Which is where it could be insulting to him. Right. Because this is what you do with your children. I need you to write down that you're going to pay me back this two hundred dollars and you're going to pay me twenty five dollars a week until it's done. Right. That's what you do with your kids. And he probably was like, well, I ain't your child. But the thing is, you're acting like one. So here we go. It's none of your business. <laughs> you know, because the alternative yeah, is you just don't business. get nothing. <laughs> being, being. Now, you can't give me the conditions when you're trying to get my money. That, that's I'm, a, I'm, I'm good sorry, for it. No, you're not it. good for it. You ain't got no money in your account. You're not good for it. I can't get over that. It's not your business. You should trust me. I don't trust you. Oh, and, and that's the funny thing, Thiz, because then I have questions. Trust you on what? What am I trusting you on? That you no, that's what I'm saying. Back. He was you saying, pay my brother you, back you should trust last week. So, He's saying you should trust my word, but I'm like, your word has come back void on a couple of people so far. Thank you. So what makes me different, right? Because if it was a matter of you would never not pay me back, then I would have been the first person you came to. But I'm not the first person. I'm the second, third, or fourth person. So if you haven't paid all the people ahead of me back, why would you pay me back now? Like this, this isn't how that math works, right? If you had come to me first, then you might have been to play that card. Hey, yeah. baby, I need, I need this. I got to do something. Um, don't ask me why right now. It's really serious. I promise I'll tell you in time. But right now, I just need it. And then if you were the first person that sh that he came to, then maybe you would have been like, "This doesn't feel right. I wish you would tell me what is going on." But I'm gonna trust you this time. Just make sure you give me the money back because we really need to have this money. And then he would have screwed you over, but it, you would have been first in line. <laughs> yeah, like you just would have been first in line. He ain't paying nobody. <laughs> nobody. She, or, or, he's or, hiding something. He is or hiding something. Clearly, I can give him the one benefit of a doubt that he does pay everybody back, and that was what the money was for. But you don't. But use, that's not paying people back. But you don't but borrow money to I'm pay back people take... that you borrow money from. He was gonna pay. He could have took the fourteen thousand dollars and paid all those other people back. But, he but that was it. That was still. We're still stuck on the. Yeah, thank you for paying my debt off. Well, can I get my fourteen? You know, can I get my money back? Can I get my fourteen thousand? It's gonna take me some time to put that together, baby. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I got to borrow it from seven more idiots. I, 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 I paid your brother back. With, my money. with the money that you no, did. No, I paid my brother back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing you pay, the only way you can say you paid my brother you back is you physically gave him the money, but you didn't pay my brother back. Not, not, to brother change back. Up, not to change up the situation, though, but what if she was dumb enough, thank goodness she wasn't to have a joint account. Oh my goodness, that money would have been gone. And this was, was so funny, but who's I who, But would it have been dumb? Was, though. Guess whose idea was it? was his it. idea. So, yeah. But I'm just thinking, if thank goodness she didn't have a no, joint account. No, if they had a joint account, that money would have been gone. He, he oh, he already would have bled that money out. Yeah. He, he did All that 20000 would have been gone. Yeah, It never would have been there. 
And I don't know that if money had been knew. gone six months after they got married. And I don't know if he knew how much the woman had. I I don't know. She never said it is that he does or not. But let's take this one step further for the fact that let's say he did know that she has twenty thousand dollars. Do you ask for over half of her money? That's eighty percent. No, six. That's how spenders are. You got to understand, people who have bad financial behaviors and are spenders, they always think that they can, they're just one big break away from, from making it all work out, even though they're always wrong. This is how you end up with people who got bad personal credit and then turn around and use their kids to keep the lights on. So now when the kid turns 18, he got bad credit too, right? I'm like, if you couldn't manage your credit, you sure enough can't manage somebody else's credit. Oh. But in their mind, now I know what to do and I'll do it better and blah, blah, blah. And they rationalize and lie to themselves and end up just tearing everybody else up. Happens all the time. Diaz, you just put my whole childhood on blast. Like, I'm like, you didn't have to go to that card. Do it all the time. It's a lot of people's cards, unfortunately. It's a lot of people's cards. It's a lot you of 20, people's cards. You 21, you move out, you have a cable bill in your name. 1983, I was nine. How am I going to have a bill in my name? I'm nine. You had, had to go to that You have had a lot of people, Tracy, who, <clears throat> and I know for a fact, again, grew up in the hood. The kids knew it. And they will be proud of it. The electric bill is in my name. And the cable bill is in my sister's name. And the gas bill is in my brother's name. Don't do that to y'all kids. Don't do that to y'all kids. I'm going to speak I'm speak on this on a couple of levels. I used to work in the bank and I would see on occasion when those young people would come in to get their first checking account and they can't have one because they already owe the bank money and they're 17 years old. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, parents don't do that. Now, to qualify my statement, it does not make it right. And I still say don't do it. But it's really hard for me to go too rough at people who are in survival mode. That's so true if you 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 are working two jobs, you barely make an ends meet. Because you're working two jobs, neither one of them got you working enough hours that you get benefits. If you do give, if you do have it, have benefits, you can't afford to use them. Um, it's real expensive being poor. Like that's that's the bottom line. Being poor is super expensive. So you end up doing things that you shouldn't do, but you got bad option and worse option. Like those are your choices, you know. Me on a daily basis, I have good option, better option. But some people are in a world where they got bad option, worse option. And it's yeah, not hard to imagine how you can find yourself where, mm -hmm. all right, I shouldn't put it in my kid's name, but I kind of want my kid to have hot water. All right. And, and then you just circle in the drain, just circle in the drain. The utility companies, it's not like they do a background check and ask for, like, I don't know, a social security number or anything. They do. They just use their kids' social. But yeah. wouldn't they find out, like, by running it, that child isn't 18 or above? Nope. They're not really running anything. They're running they're it public. to see. That's they're where these people really... Yeah, they're running it to see if that social security number ever came up exactly. in their database before. Oh. Is yeah, it a, like, is it a valid it. number? Is it's it a valid question. number? Does it have anything attached to it? If that social security number comes up on the system and says this is a new number we've never had before, ching ching. No, they're not going to do a background check of how old is this social security number. All their now I imagine at this point business. it's harder to get away oh, with now, that. Than it used to be. Now. Yeah, because they you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a lot harder now. Now I'm pretty sure they probably do do a soft credit report. I should say, maybe, yeah. but. Still, at the same time, it's like you America is really, really rough on you if you're poor. And um, like I, I put it this way, and this is an ex just a made up 
example, but I, I'm positive it's a real example. You are raising your grandchildren. Is your children, your child who had the child is in jail, on drugs, disappeared, whatever the reason is. You're raising your grandchild. You're up in age. You have health conditions. You probably already retired. So your income is limited to your Social Security. Well, if you had a working class job your whole life, your Social Security is less than a thousand dollars a month. Yeah. So now you also are on government benefits. So your total take home money in a month might be somewhere in the neighborhood of eleven to twelve hundred dollars for the entire month. And you're trying to raise a child. It is not hard to me to see where you end up having to do some things that you never would have done in your younger years. But the alternative is food, shelter, utilities, I mean, right? Yeah. And it's it's sad. And and let you have a disability on top of that? Oh goodness, no. Right? Because now you can't even make any income. Cause they, they're watching that. Yeah. <laughs> it is Terrible. Yep, it's just like parents that people that carry children on their tax return knowing good and well them are not your children. Why is you putting them on your tax return? More money. Yeah, I now, had family members in the past that would get mad at me because I would tell them straight up, if you want me to put your child on my tax returns, I'm taking the child. Thank you. I ain't playing that game. <laughs> That's exactly give me a kid. it. Give I'll me the kid. When you're ready, when you're ready to have the child back, let me know. I'll give him back. Right? I'm not taking your child from you. But what I'm not going to do is pretend like I've been taking care of this little kid all year just to take half of a, of a uh, what do you call that thing? A credit? Earn income tax. Yeah. Right? It's so I, I get an extra. To get 500. Yeah, I get an extra 500 to 1000 dollars. Because you got one too many kids to claim on your taxes. But then I get audited. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you're not putting me in jail. Give me the child. Let me take care of the I'm child. I'm out thousands of dollars. Uh, yeah. No. Because the IRS, they that. will come and get you. Ask, ask and they like anybody. to come get broke folk. Oh, yeah. they the broke folks can't easy. afford a lawyer. Yep. Do you not have to show identification for the child when you sign up for a bank account or a cable bill? Not, I can't you didn't, speak on the, you didn't I can't, get to? I can't speak on the bank account. I let Theus take care of that. The cable bill, no, because no, you, you gotta realize you. that Parker, we're the, in those days we was calling in. And you we was doing all in. of this stuff over the phone. You call in, you give the information, you give the fake social security number. The next thing you know, they come in and setting up your cable. That was it. Yeah, and for bank accounts, no, you couldn't you can't open a, a checking account without something. But what they would do is you can open a savings account for a minor, right? There's no real documentation needed other than a, a birth certificate and maybe a social security card. Kid ain't even got to be there. So the parent will open the, the savings account and then use that to help funnel money around, right? A, a huge part of the American population, this is this knows no color, this is all about economic status, is what they call unbankable. These are people who either they don't make enough money to be able to sustain a checking account or they live so close to the wire that they've already done bad on a couple checking accounts. These people can't get the bank account. So now the only way to get their money is to go to like check cash in places, uh, pay payroll advance places, things like that. So you're literally paying a poor tax because you can't afford to be in a traditional bank account. It is horrible, horrible. And on Parker's last comment, Paris is still burning. It sure is. They burn that place down. Yeah, I'm not a, you know, I don't I'm, care. I'm, I, I'm honest, I, mm, moving on to the next. Look, it, it's like Paris is throwing a fit. Now, I'm not saying their grievances aren't whatever, but they're mad because they're talking about raising the retirement age from what, 65 to 67 or, or something, 62 something thereabouts? 64, I think. 
Okay, so they're they're back there. Oh, come on now. But the fact is they are heavily taxed already, but they're heavily taxed because they have a very strong social safety net. So they want the benefits of this safe of this safety net, but they want it to remain static. And the problem is that's not reality. And we deal with that here. People want all the benefits but they don't want to pay any of the cost. So <clears throat> if the math was run on this population size with this gross domestic product and we chart out the taxes so that the money is funding the different thing, that math is only good for like one to two to three years. That math gets out of whack really, really fast. And America is about to run into this as well. What makes it so bad here in America is we don't have any good faith actors. Both parties are just directly just lying and manipulating the American public. Social Security, that should be completely revamped. It really should be because it was built off of the baby boom where you had more people who would be coming into the workforce then you had retiring out of the workforce. We are now in an inverse situation where more people are retiring out than are working and putting money in. So the math just doesn't math. But what's happening he here in America, because I'm not worried about what they're doing over there, because they ain't worried about what's happening for us. But over here, we're going to run into this. It's going to, it's gonna right? Come. It's coming. But like the Republicans are just lying, right? Republicans are saying, oh, no, we need to do all this uh, austerity and, and all this stuff and raise the retirement age, get rid of Social Security because it's going to be insolvent. No. One part of the Social Security funding source is set to become insolvent, but that's because Congress keeps borrowing out of the Social Security fund and has weakened it over time so that it's been aging faster than it was supposed to. That's one. And then two, you want to do all of these things to affect Social Security benefits to working class and lower working class people. But you don't want to do anything to have shared sacrifice by those who are earning at the higher tier. In fact, you're, they're so bold as to say the people who make a lot of money, because you can make a certain amount of money and then you stop having to pay. Once you hit a certain point, you ain't got to pay Social Security tax no more. You pay up to that point, and then the rest of it is just yours. They're so bold as to say, well, we need to make sure that it doesn't matter how much money you make, you should still get these benefits. There's a case for that. But the only way you can make that case, in my opinion, is you have to broaden this thing all the way out. And that's where I feel like we were moving towards uh, what do you call it, Tracy? Minimum income. Thing universal basic income. That, yeah, where I don't care how much money you make, you can make three million dollars a year, and you can make thirty thousand dollars a year. Everybody gets two thousand dollars a month. But the only way that can work is everybody has to pay their taxes. So you have to fix the tax code, right? So you can cut out all the games that get played, so it's easier to get the money in. And then you can do the universal income. I don't agree with the Democratic side who would say, well, whoa, well, if you're making five hundred thousand dollars a year, you don't need the, the minimum income. Who cares? Give them the money. Give them the money. I don't care. They got a pulse and they're a U.S. citizen. Give them the money. And then let's make this thing happen. Because we, we got a problem coming. We got a real big problem coming. And he just went serious, and this was supposed to be the light day. I'm sorry. That was light. All right, let's move on to the next video. <clears throat>